The following podcast contains adult language and material. The views expressed within belong to a pair of idiots and shouldn't be taken seriously, just like John Locke should have never been taken seriously. You still here? Good luck! Crash test Hello again. Hey. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Crash Test Live. Episode 5. We made it. We had to go back. We had to go back. Shout out to Mark Pellegrino. Yes, that's his real name. Nice. For doing this week's intro, advisory, whatever you want to call it. It was a lost theme if you guys didn't get it. It was a lost theme. And I feel like it was just for me this week. Yeah. Because... As you know, I have been rewatching that which is my favorite television series of all time, Lost. Mm-hmm. It was the first one, the first show in my adult life, like sort of adult life, uh, that I watched from season one all the way to the end. First one ever. It, and I love it so much. I will say that 30%, only 30%, maybe 28% of the chat knew who that was. Mm-hmm. But the ones that did know are freaking out. If you know, you know, and you're you know, you, there I wish there was some kind of phrase for like, if you knew about this, then you, you definitely would know what we're talking about. You know what I mean? Someone should coin a phrase. Someone should come up with a phrase. That would be nice. Jack, if do you have you, any thoughts? If, yeah. If you're aware, then you're, then you're aware. If you're familiar, then you understand. And it, yes, would be a good one that we should try out one. live on the show. Um, Give us Ben. It's so nice to be back. I know we're on a different day at a different time, but you know what? Everybody's everybody. It's a holiday weekend, y'all. Yeah. You can't expect people to get gather around a laptop on a Friday. Alex has to gallop. He has gallop at uh 10 a.m. <laughs> I must gallop. Let a boy gallop when he needs to. <laughs> Hey, I've been thinking about summing recently, and I want to know what you think about it. Do tell. Do you think that the older we get, our radio voices get sexier? Absolutely. Yeah. The closer I get to my microphone, too. Mm. I get very deep like this. I I went back. Chocolate rain. Chocolate rain. (laughs) Happy birthday, Jack. Uh, (laughs) That already happened. (laughs) Um, No, but I I was listening to old episodes of Full Frontal, and I was like, God, we sound like children. Children. We were, but boys. Back then, we we were five years, years ago. Five years ago, <laughs> the body uh, grows fast when you when you get to this age. You know what? I'm gonna say it. We should have known better. The things we said on Full Frontal. I listened back to some episodes. We were we were just bad boys. Okay. If my if my son ever speaks like that, I know. And my or mom, daughter, my mom yeah. watches these sometimes. And now, like now, I'm on my best behavior. There's no way in hell, and I would actually put a lot of money on this, that my parents know what this is or that we do it. What are you talking about? Your dad's a huge Twitch streamer. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's massive on Twitch. Oh, wait. We're, are we, uh, we got our, our Twitch all. I was on Twitch for the first time today. I know. It's nice. I think we're finally, we're almost, uh, we're almost verified. So uh, I don't know if it's happening this week, probably next week, but uh, the Twitch community is about to get a whole lot more fun when we do these live as we record the show live uh you'll be able to participate a lot more and we can start getting subs and things like that so that's good i, I know i don't Shout know what that means for, but it sounds cool we're learning um, we're learning yeah. things um, i noticed that it said it's like on the twitch thing it was like this show is for mature audiences only mm. so i'm wondering does that mean we can show feet yet or <laughs> can, we, can i show i feet? don't know that that's something that should ever be done i'm getting excited Mm-mm. 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 No, no, no. With us, as always, for another week, may I introduce to you Ryan Dawson and Jeffrey Maker, everybody. 
Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello, hey. Boys. hey. Uh, Jeff, coming to us live, uh, for those of you listening to the podcast audio only version, coming to us live via green screen uh, from the first Dharma the hatch. station. Yes, the hatch. The hatch. Correct. Uh, the first one was what? The. Well, you had the swan. The swan. Thank you. Uh, was it called the hole? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to my hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the swan, the dolphin, the hole. And the hole. <laughs> That, that dharma that dharma person just so bummed like oh i think i might get assigned to the pearl no 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 you're actually the hole the hole oh man all right <laughs> how you guys doing what's going on boys i'm feeling good today al jeff other one jack you all solved right. a, you solved a crime today right yeah so i was at the lake earlier today um and i got back to my car and i left and then when i was leaving about an hour later i guess my buddy called me and said hey there was a car that got broken into you into right next to you. Did your car happen to pick it up? Because I have a car that has a bunch of cameras all over it. Like, uh, what kind of car would that be? Hmm. Right. What kind of car has Tes- cameras all Tesla over Tesla Motors it? Model X. <laughs> <and stuff>. Wow. <laughs> Tesla stocks the point are is, up. <clears throat> I found true. the guy got caught by my camera. The idiot. The big dude. He's just he's peering don't, into don't my show car his there. Face, that's I'm not going to show his face. Don't show his face. Um, but yeah. point is, I, I, I submitted it to the, the authorities, and hopefully he gets, he gets put in a slammer. I love hopefully that so yeah. much. This is like, because remember, there were all those videos coming out with the Tesla cameras of people keying Teslas. Yeah. And it was just so shitty. But Horrible. That aside, I, I, this is almost like a one-up. You've won up the keying videos with it. You've we're now, solved an we're actual... Hugging, we're hugging all you normal car owners. <laughs> you solved a crime. Have you ever been? Have you ever been the victim of one of those stupid attacks that people in big trucks do? Like because they yes. hate electric cars and they. It's like, called rolling coal. Shitty. It's called what? Rolling coal. Or that's a thing. Huh? Rolling. I yeah, that's what people did it. Only in Nashville, definitely not in LA. It's illegal uh, everywhere. It's actually not illegal in Tennessee, but in California it is. <laughs> of course, it's not. In, in Tennessee it's encouraged. Yeah. So what, what yeah. exactly is it? Because you told me once, but I it's kind just of a forget. stupid mixture of I don't know if it's diesel and and the wrong intake, and they just exhaust it, and it's just this thick plume of smoke. It's horrible for oh everyone God. and everything. But a lot of times, if they see an electric vehicle, they'll get in front of you and then do it as like a yeah, very yeah fossil fuels. Fuck yeah. you. I will say that I have been I have been the victim of a key, a car keying. Someone did key my car at once. Mm. I remember that. It's a yeah. bummer when that happens too, because then you have to go and ask your wife why she keyed your car. Yeah. Sorry, and, just in, me. In in this case, I, I don't was, think I don't think this. We just shouldn't get into that this week. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But, um, so have have a good of, show. One have of a you good guys. Show. <laughs> For the record, Lisa did not key my car. She is a wonderful, she did. wonderful caring woman. Oh, they're gone. Bye, boys. She's, a, she's not a wonderful Karen woman. Caring. Caring. Car- caring. 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 Be very clear here. Here, please. She uh, listens to these. They, they popped out, but I still had questions. Oh, my dog's barking. Uh, I still had questions. Uh, Time to had, put them down. Uh, it's July 4th weekend, everybody. It's July 4th weekend. Oh. oh. Yes. Yes, it is. So bad. He's flipping it out. It is. Is that, it's is July that 4th weekend, as right? And it's a weird, it's a weird July Fourth weekend because obviously we are still very much uh, in the midst of one pandemic. Yes. Um, Alex, so I, you I think, was wondering. Sorry, to interrupt. Do you think yeah. Lisa's up there? Like, shut the, shut, God damn it, shut the fuck no, up. No, see, and this is, this is honestly, I'm like, this is, I'm terrified right now because usually Lisa is home. She yeah. actually had to leave the house today, um, and usually she is the one who strangles the dog uh, when it barks <laughs> during the show. But today she's not here Jeez. to, oh, to do said strangle. Strangle. Um, so I have no strangler, and as a result, my dog is barking loudly in this during this stream. So I apologize mm. to all our viewers. Um, what are your guys' plans for July Fourth, uh, given that we are dealing with um, a global pandemic? It's uh, it's tough this year. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. I think there's this like there's a group of like five people that I've been hang around with since this whole thing started and we've all been very very good um mm-hmm. and we have a spot or, at the lake mm-hmm. where cars get or, broken into and i think mm-hmm. we're gonna go there you call it the, the, the novids i'm gonna watch independence day and that's basically it nice yeah, yeah. yeah. you do that every yeah. year well that's <laughs> a tradition i <laughs> oh no it's a uh, picture from uh well this is jurassic day park but i had to oh jeffrey oh wow yeah. well, you got jurassic the park Goldblum but shirt on but, yeah it's okay. It still counts. It counts. Yeah, um, yeah, always. Counts. I we have we have very minimal plans. Honestly, we're uh, yeah. we're still trying our best to be very very uh, conscious and conscientious 
COVID of, conscious. Uh, yeah, of everything yeah. that's going on right now. So we're really Absolutely. still we're still kind of keeping to ourselves. We we are fortunate You're still gonna ride though, right? <laughs> I got to do a gallop. How do you do it? Is this, is this a thing? <laughs> I don't under, I don't know what you're doing. You know, like the the things that that you wear the hat and the jockey hat, and you kind of just yeah. do this move. Uh huh. Um, my my neighbor just walked walked in front of my window and just saw me doing that. And just like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, no, I'm, we're very lucky this weekend. We have uh, we we have established some uh, some safety guidelines, but we we have Vinny, one Vinny Vegas oh, coming wow. out. Oh, what a guy! Us. So it's just gonna be, it's gonna be uh, a small crew, but lucky have, you. We're all uh, we're all healthy. So that's important. And, Good. Uh, um, I've sure been on are, this. I just want to Go say ahead. this for the for the people watching and listening and everything. Make sure if you are uh, making plans or doing anything, um, be real careful. This thing is wear condoms. This thing is <laughs> this thing is not over, and it's nowhere close to being over. So mask so- up. Be good. Beginning. What I did was I went out and bought about a thousand little projectile fireworks, and I fashioned a vest around me <laughs> oh, facing God. outward. So I'm just going to walk down the street and light it, and if anyone gets close to me, Human you get one of these that. moves. <laughs> Protect. I'll, I'll invent it. We'll, we'll figure it out. I like that. Ooh. I like that a lot. All right. Well, you guys aren't, aren't paying me enough to be on this show for much longer, so I'm going to go. Bye. Speaking of All which, good things must come to an end. Speaking of which, uh, have you seen that these bozos are, are having COVID parties? Who? There's like me, there. It was I hands. think it was at a, at a college. Yeah. I don't know which college, but like literally they found out that one of them has COVID and they started making bets. Right? Yeah. Is Alabama. That part of the new, is, is that new? Was it Alabama? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. news? Is that a news thing or? It's not wonderful start? news. I just because we were talking about our Fourth of July plans, I figured that was a good uh, good way to yeah, roll se- into it. Good, but good you know segment, what? Or good segue. Don't have COVID parties, people. Be safe. Be smart. Um, that being said, I think it is time now for wonderful news. Is it? Is, is it, it time now for wonderful news? Coming to you live from CTL Studios, it's wonderful news. With its own brand new transition. Budge, budget's going up. The money's coming money, in make money. and we're Gotta spending spend- it. Real Spend fast money, make we money. can make it. So that's good. <laughs> We're actually in uh, serious, serious debt. Crippling, 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 crippling podcast debt. debt. <clears throat> in this week's wonderful news, Tennessee police warn flushing drugs could... Pay attention, Ryan. Tennessee police warn flushing drugs could create hyper-aggressive meth gators. Hell, oh. Meth gators. A police department yeah. <laughs> in Loretto, Tennessee, is asking red- residents to refrain from flushing drugs such as methamphetamine down the toilet to prevent quote-unquote, meth gators. Uh, In a Facebook post, so you know it's serious, uh, Loretto Police Department wrote on Saturday um, that officers executed a search warrant on a home and discovered the occupant trying to flush meth and drug paraphernalia down the toilet. Um, The suspect was unsuccessful and apprehended. Narcs. Um, But they have put (laughs) out a statement saying... Actual cops, narcs. Narcs. Um, But they have put out a statement saying, folks, please don't flush your drugs. Uh, The... Uh, sewer guys take great pride in releasing water that is cleaner than what's in the creek, but they are not really prepared for meth. Ducks, geese, geese, other fowl frequent our treatment ponds, and we shudder to think about all these animals hyped up on drugs. I know. Save some for us. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> um, the post warns that the meth could make its way all the way down to Shoal Creek, down the Tennessee River in North Alabama, and into the creek where a lot of crocs... Uh, or gators live. A and lot of gut crocs are looking to party. This is like this is the twenty twenty ver the shitty twenty twenty version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, except it's <laughs> sad and fucked up meth gators. Just like, fucked up gators walking. Around, hey man, you want to fucking do you want to save this house that's on fire? It's like nah, man. Let's get some more meth. Yeah, let's just do drugs, man. Yeah. Let's just get- they meet, the a friendly rat. they meet a friendly mutant rat who tries to teach them karate and discipline, and they're like, no, nah, man, try this. We just want math. We just want to do math, man. I like that. Uh, in that I'm, you know what? I'm rooting for Shredder at this point. Shred it. I'm rooting for the Shredder, and I hope he, I hope he shreds it. <laughs> uh, Think about also good. you're like all the goldfish who have been buried down there in them toilets and sewers now just desecrated with your... Come alive. With your drug waste. <laughs> We're going to have zombie... Goldfish. Zombie goldfish on meth. Meth gators. We don't need any more of this in 2020. This is the darkest timeline. It Indeed. is the darkest. Yes. We are in the worst one. The I'm going to do a quick one. pop. Quick pop. <clears throat> oh, nice. 
A library has asked its patrons to please stop microwaving their books in order to kill COVID-19. A library in Michigan has had to ask its patrons to stop microwaving books in an apparent effort to kill COVID-19. Kent District Library posted photos of books with their pages burned and warned, the radio frequency tags in all KDL materials have metal in them, folks. They will catch on fire in the microwave. Officials added that the library quarantines... Look at that. Uh, This is a real thing, people. Um, Officials added that the library quarantines all return materials for 72 hours. Um... Cooking your books. What? The? Cooking the books. We're cooking the books. Literally cooking the books. Yeah, this is a whole new way to cook your books. But guys, I was going to say, I really hope there's a picture where they go with that. And there was. And it did not disappoint. It's so dumb. Like, what's are, going is on, guys? Is everyone dumb or is it just, are we, are we just so smart? That's what I want to know. What's going on, guys? Why? What's why, going on? Why are we microwaving our books, folks? I'll tell you what, though. I didn't love The Great Gatsby. So you'd microwave it? <laughs> I, I'm not saying I would. Um, NASA Wait, is offering 35... Really? What? Sorry, I like, I like that book. I didn't love it. Uh, All it was, right. I thought it was uh, shallow and pedantic. Um, NASA <laughs> is offering $35,000 in prizes to design a toilet that will work on the moon. Jeffrey! Yes! Huh? <laughs> I'm this already way like, ahead of you. This sounds like your, your area of expertise. Yes, I'm currently on the moon. I'm already working on it. It looks. How are you breathing? Obviously. Where have you been? Where, where have you been pooping? This is actually a window. You can't tell it's so clear up here. What a big! You got big windows up there. That's nice. Well, you, you got the you in the penthouse. There's no one else up here. What do you who cares? All the inventions are really paying off. You got a moon base now. That's right. Moon base. <laughs> uh, this is true though. NASA wants you to help put a toilet on the moon. They're offering thirty five thousand dollars in prizes to design a toilet that could be used on the moon. Uh, they <laughs> <laughs> they have set a very lofty goal. Um, to send astronauts back to the moon by 2024, and the crew is going to need to go duty. I number feel one, like... Number two. Nice. Right there. Right nice. There. We got a graphic for everything, people. That's an official image of an astronaut Oh, that's the official on... NASA image? Wow, for the people listening to the podcast, it's an astronaut sitting on a toilet. You know, you, 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 get, you, you picture an astronaut sitting on a toilet, and you don't know what you're going to get, and it's, and it's, it's an, an astronaut, astronaut sitting, on sitting on a toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Again, worst timeline. Worst timeline. It's well, also uh, very think, weird. It's also very weird to me that they're offering thirty five thousand dollars in prizes. Right, and then like coupons to local businesses. Co- coupons <laughs> to Jeffrey local dollars. businesses. <laughs> Jeffrey dollars to Toys R Us. Uh, oh, it's, those are IOUs. They're as good as money. <laughs> <laughs> it's real money. Yeah. Um, one cool thing is that this new moon mission is going to include the first female astronaut to ever travel to the moon, which is awesome. And uh, that, that hasn't happened yet. No, no females no. to the moon yet. We, um, well, that's going to be the next bout damn time when it happens. About that's damn cool. time. About damn, about damn time. time. About damn time. No. That's right. Well, he, didn't, he didn't have the graphic ready to go this week. We week didn't have the graphic ready to go. We'll put it in after, in post. Um, the, I, I kind of got upset when I read the rest of this article and realized, though, that it's so it's $20,000 for first place, 10000 for second, and five for third. So it's not actually $35,000 if you win. But so you like, can make, yeah. Can I be honest? I don't want to like turn my nose up at twenty thousand dollars because twenty thousand dollars is a lot of money. In prize money, though. But if you're inventing a moon toilet, like okay, imagine if it was twenty thousand dollars worth of pop tarts. Like, let me show you what that would look like. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> this is twenty thousand dollars worth of pop tarts. I gotta say, Jack, you've made a dent in the pop tarts. Like, the, there's several boxes missing. A and all I got it and all I have to show for it is a stomach ulcer. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hey guys, if you're uh, if you're good at the science and love toilets, make yourself a moon toilet. I'd like to see your best inventions. Um, a man was arrested for displaying a wooden penis statue in his front yard recently. Jamie Gagney has lived on Ruggles Gagney. Road. Gagney. Gagney. He's lived on Ruggles Road in Wilton, New York for 10 years. He recently found himself in a dispute with the town over plans for his workshop, uh, kind of like Jeff, which the town says aren't up to code. They've issued a stop work order. He says, I just want to live in peace and finish my workshop. Gagney says he's eager to do what's needed, but says the town has been ignoring his communication. However, there's a wooden statue placed in his front yard that's hard to ignore. He carved a seven-foot penis out of a pine tree and placed it in the front yard. Do you think he screamed, gag on this? (laughs) That's a big old... That's a big old dong. Gag on this, assholes. Um, you kept saying 
Gagney, but it sounded like you saying gag me. <laughs> I hate everything about what right. you're saying right now. Um, Chat's going off. They're loving it. Uh-oh, people are talking. Uh, so he was arrested for this, and there's a whole thing. There's a, like I think that it's up for debate as to whether or not this is like profane uh, or... Um, you know, not appropriate for like the little kiddies driving by at a church in the morning. Can you say it's art? Art, but you, that's, art you can and do that's his argument. He's saying, look, this is my property. This is my right to display my statue. And if you're offended by a lapine, that's your problem. And I would say there's dongs everywhere. There's dongs all over the place in this world, guys. Hot dogs. Dongs. Not dogs. Dongs. dongs. Corn dogs. Dongs. Bottles. Dongs. Are you, what? I don't, I'm just dick shaped things. Oh, 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 oh. No, I was thinking like statues. Like there's like you oh. go to you go to any park, any neighborhood park. Oh, and like, a, like the Greek statues. The there's Greeks. a little marble. There's a little marble boy peeing into the pond. I, you love, know? I love this dude just standing. Just fucking... Yeah. Presenting. Presenting. <laughs> I, I, for one, believe this man should be able to display his dong uh, in the front yard with without harassment. This week's American hero. This week's American hero. Jamie Gagney. We support you. Diego, the Galapagos tortoise, with a species-saving sex drive, has officially retired. A giant Galapagos tortoise whose legendary libido has been credited with saving his species from extinction has officially entered retirement. This is like Tom Brady retiring from the NFL, folks. New hero. But turtle fucking. New hero. Diego and 14 other male tortoises have returned to their native Española, one of Ecuador's Galapagos Islands. The tortoises were put out to pasture on Monday after decades of breeding in captivity on Santa Cruz Island. The breeding program was a success, producing more than 2,000 giant tortoises since it began in the 1960s. Diego is 100 years old and is thought to have fathered hundreds of progenies, around 40% of the 2,000 giant tortoises alive today. It's my dad. That's my dad. That is a hero daddy. A, tr- a hero daddy. <laughs> hero daddy, if I do say so myself. Ecuador's environmental minister, Paulo Prano uh, Andrade, uh, said the breeding program was closing an important chapter in its history. Diego and the other tortoises were returning home after saving their species from extinction. I, hey. It's, 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 a, it's a bit, the imagery to me is like a bit kind of like going to the moon, saving the planet, and like coming back. You know what I mean? Like these, I picture them is, like walking out of the ship, yeah. like slow motion. The song's playing. The flag in the this background. This is the, the this is that last scene in Armageddon when they come home. Yeah. Did they come home? That's I can't what, remember that movie very well. Uh, I think they died. I think okay. they all died. All right. Well, but this is like a tortoise called Diego. Not just any tortoise. A giant one whose libido has saved his species from extinction, no less. And he's retiring. Here he is in the Galapagos Islands. He's a hundred, so. This retirement's not unreasonable, and scientists estimate that he's fathered up to 900 giant tortoises, which are all alive today. You heard that right, 900. For decades, he's been kept in captivity on Santa Cruz Island as part of a breeding program. Before that, he was in a zoo in San Diego. Now, though, Diego's being returned to where he started off, on a tiny, uninhabited island called Española, from which he was taken in the 1920s. And I'm spent. <laughs> ah, God bless and Godspeed, little buddy. Man, that's that's just beautiful. May you may you spend your next hundred years chewing the bountiful fruits and plants of Española, <laughs> which is what I hope to do one day. Which is, and finally, in this week's news, a one-woman band plays tequila in the middle of the woods. Hit it. You didn't, we didn't wait till she said tequila. That was the part uh, I wanted. And I'm drinking a little bit of tequila today. So mm, bad boy. Cheers to her. I love that. She like was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta go to the woods. I gotta bring my camera. And like, <laughs> yeah. I gotta get like a little camera stand. <laughs> I was saying that when we found that video, I was like, my favorite part about that whole thing is that 
she's just alone in the woods. Yeah. She just went for a nice meditative jam. There's beautiful, there's, there's beauty in this world, in this planet, Alex. You just got to look for it. You it's unfathomable. Yeah. It's unfathomable. There's no ends to the beauty of this world, Jack. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to be sharing it with you, buddy. That's right. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. That was this week's wonderful news. When we get back, Jack's next. I, like I was typing song. something. I like that song. Reed, you're supposed to roll the, the, the snack video. It's Jack Snacks. It's time for Jack I like, Snacks. I like that song, though. We got the intro. We had the intro and everything. Reed, do we have the intro? Am I crazy? Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Okay. Yeah. Now, now we're officially in the segment Jack Snacks. Okay. Russ is going to be upset because he asked that I don't refer to them as segments for the um, sake of the show. Well, he, that's his fucking fault for not paying attention to this episode. Here we are. Um, Jack, what do you have for us this week? Have we settled? Uh, by the way, have we settled on Jack Snacks? I'm just calling it that. At this point, I'm just going, I'm just going to keep saying it and hoping that it sticks. But I noticed that it still down here says Jack's untitled snack segment. Well, we'll let, we'll let the crowd decide. Mm. Um, I will say that what, it seems like you you typed something in the chat here. <laughs> yeah, I was typing when we came back live, and I wasn't ready, but that's okay. If a, if a one-woman band plays tequila alone in the woods and no one's around to see it, did it happen? As the true. I, that, someone in the, I, I should shout them out. Someone in the chat uh, said that, and I was trying to point out that it was a funny, and I wanted, oh. I wanted them to find it and put it up on the screen, but it's okay. The moment's passed. The show's come off the rails. This might be, in five episodes, our first crash. Crash! Where things crash. didn't quite go to plan. Crash. Okay, I think we've crashed. We've crashed. We've crashed, folks. <clears throat> we've crashed. Anyway, it's time for Jack Snacks. Jack Snacks. Take us um, in. All right. So as many of you know, it's 4th of July weekend here, over here in America. Correct. And so I've got my hands on the very rare um, Mountain Dew Liberty Brew. Oh, God. Yeah, it's. <laughs> oh God! It's got fifty flavors in one. Fifty flavors. Ugh. That's five zero flavors. 50. And let me just go ahead and, just, and first. And they're I'll say all that. they're all lemon, just like fruit. <laughs> yeah. I so I'm not really <laughs> over the years. I've grown to become a less of a Mountain Dew fan. Like I used to love it when I was a kid, high school yeah. and whatnot. Then I yeah. started loving Mount. Now I love Mountain Dew. Code Red and, you know, Baja. I remember that about you. I remember you being a huge Mountain Dew kid. And I was like, I was never really into Mountain Dew, but you sort of sold me on it through, uh, by way of Taco Bell. Yes. Because I did love Taco Bell. And we used to go to Taco Bell together all the time. And like Baja Blast sort of very quickly became my lifeblood. And it's now what I run on 24 It pairs with the cheesy gordita crunches in such a way. (laughs) (laughs) It accentuates, it really brings out the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the meat. So this is 50 flavors, and you got just, I mean, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, so this what? is like, this is Mountain Dew's patriotic, fuck yeah, America, um, you will get some kind of disease from this. Yeah, uh, heart, heart murmurs or something. Murmur. You will definitely have heart murmurs after drinking. Um, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to give it a spin. You'll give it a try, buddy. I'm what do you think it's going to taste like? It's blue. For those listening, it's a blue bottle with American flags and eagles and buffalo on it. And I think a, I don't, I don't and know the Statue if I saw, of Liberty. Yeah, I was going to say, Liberty. I don't know if I saw incorrectly, but I think the Statue of Liberty is riding a motorcycle. Yes. Which, which is, uh, has to um, be so offensive, right? It's offensive. Very, yeah, in some way. Are we upset? Well, I think here I'm we upset. Go. Um, gonna... I would like you to name all yeah. 50 flavors. <laughs> <laughs> as I'm tasting them, as you go. Um, I will say that it is pre-chilled to, uh, I think it's 40, they wanted, they said 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So is the preferred pre-chilled. tasting? Preferred tasting. <laughs> uh, temperature? Yeah. Okay. Of this bluish purple drink. All right. One flavor per state. Yeah, I get it. I get it, chat. Oh. I love it. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, really? Wow! You love it. Mmm. Okay. Wow. Describe it to us. Okay, I want to say it's it's kind of a hints of blueberry. Okay. 
hints of blueberry. Um, it's almost like a like a blueberry mountain. And 49 beer. other things. And yeah, you know, let me try to figure out the 49. <laughs> There's it some blueberry great. in there somewhere. It tastes great. Mm. Wow. This is this is this pretty is a, fucking this is pretty fucking impressive. This is a this is a change of pace because every it's, other snack so far has been very either awful or like pretty middle of the road. Like you have not or been like satisfied a journey. yet. This is yeah. right off the top. It really hits it hits in, the, in such a way. Um, I will say this tastes better than regular Mountain Dew, hmm. in my opinion. It's fucking delicious, and okay. I can see it pairing very well with a vodka or tequila. Wow. Yeah. It, I'm not gonna lie. It looks like you're drinking Windex. <laughs> I mean, I'm really impressed, man. I, I got to give this an 8, 8 out of 10. Wow. It, it loses two points purely because it's Mountain Dew. But okay. the flavor is there, man. I'm telling you, it's not too sweet. It's perfect. So there's been over 60 Mountain Dew variants, and you currently are drinking the newest one. The, there's mm. one coming out called Mountain Dew Voodoo, which is a mystery-flavored variant to be released in 2020. Uh, like it's that. supposed to be candy corn-flavored. Mm-mm. Not sure mm. I like that at all. But interesting fact, that's a lot this, of Mountain Dews. That is a lot of Mountain Dews. This is almost, I want to, now that I'm, I've had a, a second to, to take it all in, digest it, if you will, um, I want to say it's almost kind of like a mellow cotton candy taste, like a blueberry cotton, like a, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah. So I think Mountain Dews just trying to be problematic at this point. Like yeah. They're just looking for any way to be, ugh. I don't know. I don't know, Jack. Pretty good. I don't know, man. But it's hey, you know what? Yeah. It's it's your freedom. And it's your hey, freedom in this country to drink and celebrate America however you want. And if I want to ride a if, motorcycle. If you so choose to put all that uh, high fructose corn syrup into your veins, mm-hmm. you can do it with a little bit of Ameri- uh, American whatever the fuck that drink is that I yeah. no longer endorse. Blue blue drink. <laughs> blue Unnamed blue drink. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so it got an Ugh. eight. You gave it an eight. Yeah, pretty good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Baja Blast will always sort of be my my go to. The crowd's talking or the the chat's talking shit, but it's like, yo, try it. Like, yeah. I get it, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Just just get me back to my Taco Bell. Oh, that's my safe not, that's my safe space. Yeah. Is a Taco Bell. Reason. The mm. warm embrace of a cheesy gordita crunch. To be to be wrapped up. In the, the the gooey center of a crunch wrap supreme. Ooh, I just sorry, I just got another I just got another uh, description. It tastes okay. like a melted freezy pop. Oh like a melted blue freezy pop. That's okay. the best description. That's what it is. Okay. Like a blue otter pop melted. Sure, sure. Mm. Cool. Sorry. I'm with it. Yeah. And that brings us to Great job, by the way, Jack. This segment Thanks, gets man. better and better every time. Uh, I'm very hungry and I want Taco Bell. Um it's time for hey you know it'd be awesome that's right the fabled <laughs> the fabled <laughs> jeff maker returns to the show hello the lab's getting bigger for those Good of to you be here. uh not able to see the superimposed green screen background of an even more impressive laboratory behind him now. We've got plants. we got it all, baby. I got a picture of a like sailboat. To... Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, you change your... Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Nice. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. Jeff, how are oh, you doing today, buddy? Yeah. I'm great. Uh, how are the inventions going? You've been... You've been... You took a week away to yes. sort of gather the thoughts because you yes. can't... Inspiration doesn't always just strike, you know? Sometimes you need time. Correct. Time is the best teacher, they say. That's what, that's what I've been writing. <laughs> so <laughs> you've, uh, you've provided us with another incredible list of uh, $100 inventions that you've had on your mind lately. That's right. <clears throat> and I'd like to go through some of those with you now, if that's all right. All right. Please. Invention one, the Master Blaster, a product that blasts hair onto your body instantly. <laughs> Master Blaster runs by the town. <laughs> you go to the local barbershop or salon, fill it up with your favorite free hair, and then you simply blast it onto your chest, face, arms, legs, or anywhere you might want hair. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening to the podcast, free hair. 
Uh, <laughs> there is a man in a ghillie suit with a leaf blower blasting hair onto a... <laughs> An already hairy back. Um, you say it uses mini laser beams to strategically locate your pores and zap the hairs right back into those skin holes. Skin holes. Skin holes. Okay. Correct. All of this has been uh, scientifically verified and approved by the... We're working on it. We got a team... Got a yeah. team going on yeah, over here. We're, we're, we're expanding the operation. We're testing. We're testing it on plants. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting. We're starting with uh, nude, uh, nude squirrels. I mean, people uh, want hairy plants. So no nude squirrels were harmed in the blasting of this hair. Uh, do you have a blind date who prefers a mustache? Don't get caught off guard. Hit the bathroom before they sit down and blast some hair on that lip. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> That's right. That's the uh, is that the pitch like what? That's the yeah, it's it's the it's the thought bubble for the commercial that hasn't been invented yet either uh-huh. for, for the big meeting. Well, yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Trying to look zone. impressive in your in your big meeting <laughs> <laughs> and say, have a successful mustache. <laughs> we got to move on, guys. We got to move on. In the zone, it's a fluffy blanket that automatically adjusts to your ideal temperature. Set your ideal warmth or coolness via an app. When your room thinks it's hot stuff, in the zone brings that temperature back down to reality. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that little guy. Oh, it's a pug oh, wrapped, wrapped, wrapped in a blanket. We need a. Oh. We need a uh, a website just for your inventions. We got to publish these. We need like, like a Sky a, Mall, a Jeff Mall. Yeah, we need like a, <laughs> a Jeff Mall. An encyclopedia so. of just Jeff's. Um, yeah. Invention. I love. I love the line when your when your room thinks it's what is it? When your it says when your room thinks it's hot stuff. <laughs> Jeff writes these. Yeah, I've mentioned this before. Jeff is solely responsible for the text. Yeah, that I Jeff. Read. Jeff. It's usually like two a.m. It just dawned on me that you basically talk how like everyone in eighties movies talks, like hot stuff. Well, <laughs> you think hot 80s. stuff. You think <laughs> you hot stuff, child kid. Of the eighties. What can you say? That's right. Uh, uh, snooze control. A sleeping aid you take that allows you to set a timer on the capsule before taking for only the amount of time you want to sleep. Phone alarms are loud and can drain your battery. With this revolutionary item, you can set it and forget it. Anywhere from three to ten hours, however long you need to rest up before the big presentation at the office. (laughs) (laughs) I, I I hate everything about this one. Oh my god. I don't want it. In or around my mouth. I love it. <laughs> well, also, like when you're on the tour bus and everyone's phone alarms are going off in the morning, it's maybe it's a little, it's easier to do it this way. It's kind yeah. of my head is that for I it. Find it. I find it oddly specific that you have three to 10 hours noted. Is well, that, have you been running tests? Is this something that you've experimented with on yourself? And I, I've like, noticed that, uh, yeah, you don't want to take it. Uh, we haven't developed the science yet to get just the first two hours. Hmm in there mm. so we're, we're 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 using some plants right now and and boy are they sleepy oh yeah <laughs> oh boy boy are those plants sleepy moon base a toilet that works on the friggin oh jeff what a toilet that works on the moon you can't do this whoa oh. thirty five thousand thirty five thousand dollars maybe nasa you. pays me the moony and i'll make sure it works it'll be the new headquarters <laughs> for your moon the toilet will turn the astronauts waste into frozen pieces of art in the form of earth stuff for aliens to find later yeah, and maybe give we back to you, the universe for once. You it, know, it can be it can be our little secret. <laughs> you're coming for so you're coming for that thirty five k. Well, the twenty, hopefully. Oh you yeah, know, you're to go for first place. Right. Well, maybe you could just come in first, second, and third. Okay. Really, those those no. astronauts could use the sleep pill until they get there. There it I is. Know. I don't know. Oh, it could yeah. work. Combine them. Hey, someone someone in the chat uh, wants to call Jeff's store the Wheeze Market. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's clever. Like That's it. clever. Right. Like uh, and finally, the pool boy, buoy, the pool boy, a pool float that you attach to your dingling that alerts you by floating to the surface if you're about to get, if you're about to get an erection before getting out of the pool or ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Boner alert. <laughs> oh, it's so. This this just, you know what? Just just it's a hot it's taken hot us boy in episodes. a pool. I'm I've not been, saying. I've been locked up too long. <laughs> I, 
I, I do appreciate that in the graphic, the, the man in the pool is drinking uh, Summer Days Rosé. Thank you for the product. Yes. Please. Good taste. Um, it good taste. It's only taken us five episodes, and this show is just straight in the potty. We're just yeah. toilet now. Well, We're, space fine. Space needs a toilet, too. I mean, That's true. And it needs toilet humor. It's what we know best. So hopefully, hopefully this show transcends just the earth, and Crash Test I'll, Live can be something that brings people joy around the galaxy one day. I love that image, dude. Just a hot boy drinking rosé. Yeah, can we throw that up one more time? Because I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it so Tom Brady? Like, yeah, it's, other, it it's Tom, like Brady Tom Brady and Justin he's, Bieber's kid. He's sitting in a donut float. Uh, he's holding a bottle of Summer Days Rosé. And then there's an adjacent pool float that has a sign in it that says, Boner alert, stay in the water. And it says danger, which, yes, absolutely danger. Absolutely danger. And the bottle is bigger than his head quite right so round of applause for jeffrey this week uh, um he's really doing it he's re- i mean are we we're not should, we're not are we okay are we gonna be okay no why what would give you the impression we're gonna be okay <sighs> i'm not sure i'm not sure uh we're gonna take another break when we get back it's time for another installment of are you smarter Then Jack, we'll be right back. There it is. Nice. There it is, people. We're back. The transitions. We're hitting them with the transitions today. It's time for Are You Smarter Than Jack, which is a game show brought to you by Crash Test Live. Very excited to be here. Thank you, of course, to our live studio audience who are in my house, who I keep in my basement uh, and do all the cheering. Um, Thank you to the house band. Basement people. Okay. Um, Basement they really, people. they stop right on my cue. It's amazing. Yep. They're so talented. Uh, we reviewed, are you smarter than Jack? After several variations in the early episodes of this show. Uh, last week we debuted a new version, a 2.0, if you will. And, uh, it felt good. It felt real good. Jack, how about, how'd you feel about it? Um, other than getting one answer, right? I felt pretty good. Well, it's funny that you say you got one answer right, because you actually got zero answers right on the broadcast. But after some further review, we came to find out that we do actually need to give you one point. Ah. Because last week you answered a question about Game of Thrones. All right. uh, And your answer, the answer we had as the right answer was wrong. The answer was, in fact, Tyrion Lannister was in the most episodes of Game of Thrones. Appearing in 61 episodes. So I still wasn't right. <laughs> you were not right, but we were not right either. <laughs> so um, I, I'm getting a, a, a pity point? We're giving you, we're giving you one uh, pity, pity point. point. <laughs> nice. Fact checker. Oh, uh, that's our resident fact checker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with him, folks. Fact checker. He gets everything right. Um, so you will, you will be awarded one point. May week, God have mercy is, on your soul. Which is absolutely not fair to the new person who is competing against you, but that's how the rules work on this show. Wait, I'm starting you, out with one point? You get one point this week by default because we feel so bad for getting Hey, you false Papa with the Mountain Dew, we're celebrating. So, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. Um, our contestant this week is named Sabrin. She's from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Home of Big Tress. Home of Big Tress. Uh, She's been a fan of All Time Low since 2009. She's been to 32 shows. That is a band that I... That is a band that I can get into. Seldom recognized on Crash Test Live. We never talk about them. But they're okay, those All Time Low boys. Eh. They're all right. Eh. Sabrin wants to become a hairdresser. Her favorite movie is Twilight. Her favorite TV show is Law, Law, and Order, SVU. <laughs> Wait, law. did you say Law, Law? Law, Law, Law. Law, Law, law and Order. Law, Law, and Order, SVU. <laughs> it's, just... it's a different show. 
Uh, uh, she had a video go viral when Dave Grohl gave her his shoe at a Foo Fighters concert. This is true. I think I, re- I think I remember that. Let's see the video. Roll it. Or is there a picture? There's something. We have something. We have proof. There's got to be some proof. Are we standing? Oh, there, there they are. What? There they are. That's Dave. And Which, he's going, is, she, is she the one on the left? I believe she is. <laughs> I the believe one. that's Dave Grohl. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's Dave Grohl. I would wow. like to know who the guy in, in the polka dotted shirt is because he looks like yeah. he's having a great time. We gotta ask her. That's true, though. It went like it went like fully viral. It was like written about in in actual publications, not just talked about on Crash Test Live. That's real <laughs> media sources covered this. People, yeah, that's sick. We have a celebrity in our midst. Can I a spell gosh your darn hair? Celebrity. Do you mind if I spell your hair? Um. She also made a video for this. Oh. And this is why she was picked, because she went the extra mile. We're going to roll that video right now. Are you smarter than Jack? Are you smarter than Jack? I'm smarter than Jack. (laughs) So, uh... Uh, That's great. That's Please welcome the show, Sabrin. Well, we were going to applaud, but now we're going to boo. <laughs> no! Because Sabrin's audio is... Oh, maybe, asked. Sabrin, maybe try logging out and logging back in. Sabrin, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? Sabrin! Sabrin. If you can... Oh no! Hey, try logging out the, and logging back in. I think she's using AirPods, so uh, maybe maybe take the AirPods out, disconnect them, and reconnect them, and uh, whatever other Bluetooth devices you have running, uh, turn those off. Mm. We're gonna give her a minute. There we go. Oh, that's better. We we'll can't, can't hear her. you, but the buzz but, is gone. But the buzz is gone. Uh, this is the joy. This is the joy of a live Jack. broadcast, y'all. Can you hear me now? Yes, Yay! we got you. Shit, I did a crash. You crashed our show. You crashed. It's fun. Sabrin. That's the, that's the whole point. You absolute monster. How could you? Well, you're a monster because you let him start out with a point, and I don't think that's fair. That's true, but it's my it's, show. It's not fair to you, but it's definitely fair to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair to Tyrion Lannister, who we did a, <laughs> yeah. a harsh injustice last week. <laughs> Sabrin, do you know how this game show works? Because I sure don't. Uh, we got six categories of questions. Each question is more unfathomable, unfathomable than the next. Thank you, Jeffrey. I've had tequila, and it's hard to read. The challenger answers a question first, then Jack will answer a different question from that same category. Whoever has the most correct answers at the end of the game wins a Hewlett Packard printer from 1984. And a Pop-Tart. And one Pop-Tart. What about Mountain Dew? You uh, don't that's want saying that. here. <laughs> If no one has any correct answers after six rounds of questions, we go to the bonus round, which can be a tiebreaker. However, obviously this week, the rules are different because Jack is starting with one point. Jack has no prior knowledge of the questions. Those are our rules. Are you ready to play? Yes. Are you smarter than Jack? Sabrina, give us thumbs up if you are. I'm ready. (laughs) Okay, suspense. (gasps) Category one, Sabrin. Your category is the 4th of July. Okay. Which is a date on the calendar. What mm-hmm. U.S. city has the biggest, most expensive 4th of July fireworks display? Is it A, New York City? Is it B, Boston? Is it C, Los Angeles? Or D, Miami? B. B, fast answer, but unfortunately... Damn it. I do, I do appreciate going with your gut, though. I, I, I like I it. Do she jumped it. in. Yeah, she I don't think about it. It was a leap of faith. Because if you don't know the answer, it's always good to go with your gut. It was a leap Obviously. of faith. And, and I'll tell you what, sometimes those leaps of faith don't pay off. The answer is New York. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Jack. Hey. Fourth of July. Approximately how many hot dogs do Americans eat on the fourth of July? Is it A, 30 million, B, 75 million, C, 115 million, or D, 150 million? Okay, there's no way it's D, so I'm going to go with A, 30 million. I'm sorry, what was your answer? A, 30 million. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> the answer is, in fact, D, 150 million. There are is a way. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. There is a way. Dude, think about how many people there are in the United States alone. And then 30, think about... 30 the- million. That's one hot dog per person. <laughs> 
That is also uh, incorrect. 328 million, by the way. 328 million. 328 Wait, million so, in the United States. That means so half of that America. like 40% <laughs> something in there, 40 some percent of Americans are eating hot or eating dogs. However, hot dog. Last July 4th, our friend Nano ate nine hot dogs and threw up. <laughs> So he accounts for some of those hot dogs. Category yeah. two, uh, the score is nil to nil, but Jack has a point. Uh, category <laughs> at the drive-in, the film Independence Day originally had a different title. What was it, Sabrin? Your choices are A, Checkmate, B, Death Blow, C, Doomsday, and D, Earth's End. Um, C. Sorry, what was your answer? C. C, Doomsday? Yeah. Ooh! Oh, shit! <laughs> Welcome to Earth. I'm sorry, roll that video again. Roll that video again. Please. We missed the joke. Welcome to Earth. There we go. Hell yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I would, I would have said D probably, but all right. Welcome to Earth, Jack. The answer is C. Right. We were one to one, tied up. Jack, mm. what film grossed the most money God. on a 4th of July weekend? Was it A? Transformers, Dark of the Moon. B, Spider-Man 2. C, Men in Black. Or D, War of the Worlds. I don't fucking know. Um, ugh, I hate these questions. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're just questions, man. Don't hate they're them. They're just questions. Don't hate the, the most money. I mean, this is just a guess. It has to be a Fashion guess. Fashion a guess. Fashion a guess. Um, let's say War of the Worlds. Uh, D. I'm sorry. The correct answer is B, Spider-Man 2. Terrible movie. <laughs> terrible movie. Well, you're a terrible person. So <laughs> That's the best one. Sam, Ra Sam Raimi, Spider-Man 2? Dude. W who's Sam Raimi? The guy that directed it. <laughs> oh. oh, of course. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's not as good as, um, it's not as, good as Green Lantern. Not as good as Green <laughs> no, as Green how dare you? We're not going not, there anymore. You can't use that as, as ammunition to hurt me anymore. Not as good as Tomer Ray. Hey! <laughs> Damn, it yes. Damn it all to hell. Category three. <sighs> We're tied up at one to one. Grill Masters. Sabrin, the crunchy exterior of barbecued meat is called what? Oh. Ew. A, wood. Ew. B, angel hair. Or sorry, angel char. <laughs> C, cracklin. Or D, bark. Uh, um, All of these were nicknames that people used to call me in high school, by the way. <laughs> D. Your answer is D? Yeah. You are correct. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? She's bringing <laughs> it. I told you it was smart. She's smart. She wasn't joking. She wasn't uh. kidding, Jack. It's two to one. And Jack has a, a pity point. No, he has a point. You have a pity point. Here's a point. Oh, it's two, oh, oh, so we're at two to two. Shit. No, no, it's two to yeah. one. No, it's two to one. You're right. It's, just, it's not a pity point. It's just a point. It's, Jeff says it's one to one. I'm terrible no, at this. It's two to one. It's two to one. It's two to one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to gonna figure it out. We're going to figure out the scores. The scores matter. The printer <laughs> needs to go to the right person. <laughs> and I got to get rid of these Pop-Tarts. <laughs> we got to get rid of these Pop-Tarts. In what U.S. city can you find the world's most expensive hamburger? It's $5,000. Your choices are A, Miami, B, Las Vegas, C, New York City, or D, Honolulu. I gotta go New York. C. No. God damn The answer it. is Las Vegas. Think, Jack. Ah. Think. <laughs> why, why, why would that make any sense? Because that's a place, it's a, it's a town of, uh, it's a town of luxury and opulence. In opulence. Luxury in opulence. Yeah, and people want to spend money on a burger, okay? You're not going to go to New York. There's sophisticated business people there. But in Vegas, five thou on a burg? Serve Easy. it up. Serve it up. Your category is water world. This is a Jeff Maker quiz, if I've ever seen one. Wow, this is a Jeff Maker quiz. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the creature that supposedly lives in Lake Champlain in the northeast of the U.S.? Your choices are... It's not actually Waterworld, the movie. It's, I think it's just water-based oh. questions. Oh. Uh, I realized that as I read the question. Your choices are A, Champ, B, Lassie, C, The Remonster, 
or D, mucky. Wow. The Vermonster is also what they call Bernie Sanders. Let's go. I'm going to go with C. You sold me. I'm sorry, what was it? I'm going to go with C. Uh, Damn it. I led you astray. The answer is champ. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Our little champ. Jack. These are really hard. Where is the tallest water slide in the world located? Is it A, Australia, B, Singapore, C, Brazil, or D, the United States of America? I'm going to go with B, Singapore. You guys got to you guys got to think. What you guys what are rushing. What do you like think about what? Your whole life. You got answer is in got... fact C, Brazil. Yay. <laughs> God. Yai in the chat. Sabrin. Yai. Category, <laughs> good humor. I think we're talking ice cream here. I'm not sure, though. Jeff's throwing me curveballs now. <laughs> ben and Jerry's was the first company to sell which flavor of ice cream? Your choices are A, peanut butter brownie, B, chocolate chip cookie dough, C, apple pie, or D, s'mores. Sounds delicious. <laughs> no, that was the wrong song. Um, B. B? Yeah. Chocolate chip cookie dough? Yeah. Wow. God damn it. I'm really good at guessing. Wow. Sabrin, <laughs> correct. Wow. I'm excited. It's three to one. It is three Ho to one. Hope we got a two pointer coming up. <laughs> you don't. Which popular drink was originally created and marketed as a syrup intended to be an ice cream topping? Is it A, Hawaiian Punch, B, Cherry Cola, C, Tab, or D, Cream Soda? What? <laughs> the question is on the screen if you would like to read it again. Which popular drink was originally created and marketed as a syrup intended to be an ice cream topping? Uh, I'm going to say B, Cherry Cola. God damn it. The answer the is, in fact, A, Hawaiian Punch. Oh, interesting. Which I would not have guessed either, Jack. In your, That's in a your tough one. Defense. Uh, would you have guessed Brazil for the biggest water slide? Yeah, I know my water slides. <laughs> I, and know I know my know, water, and I know I Brazil. Know Brazil. So I would have indeed. Uh, category is beer fest. Sabrin, what is the top selling beer in the United States? Your choices are A. Coors Light, B. Heineken, C. PBR, or D. Bud Light. Mm. I want to say C, but I think I'm wrong. Can I have a hint? No, I'm already doing better. C. You don't need a hint. You're winning. C here, here. is, unfortunately, incorrect. The correct answer is Bud Light. Yeah. My, Bud Light. Bud Light. <clears throat> Jack, what are the four main ingredients in beer? Your choices are A, wheat, water, <laughs> yeast, and hops. B, Wood, water, hops, and yeast. C, water, hops, yeast, and malts. Or D, water, yeast, hops, and sugar cane. Sugar cane. Sugar cane. Sugar cane. <laughs> uh, I want to say A. You want to say that, or that's your answer? Uh, I want to say... <laughs> 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 yeah. I want to say C. Jack. I, I want to say... Coming through in the clutch with the correct answer, C. C, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Water, yes. hops, yeast, and malts. Yeah. Well done. Well done, my friend. It is three to two. Jeffrey, is that including Jack's... Uh, yes, it point? is. I think it is. Yes, it okay. is. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, a point. Yeah. Just a point. So, final round. I can catch up for the tie! This could be yeah. the tie. This could be the one that ties it. On average... How many teeth does an adult shark go through in its lifetime? Because, <laughs> you know, they, they shed teeth constantly when they bite things, when they brush their so teeth. So is this whoever's closest? They, like, how is this going to go? A, when they get a popcorn kernel or a Dorito stuck in between one of their teeth, that thing comes right out. Um, so we're both going to take an answer from each one of you, and whoever's yeah. closer is going to win. Okay. On average, how many teeth does an adult shark go through in its lifetime? Go ahead, Sabrin. Oh, damn it, why do I have to go first? You don't. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, 
I'm going to say 361. Sabrin? 432. Sabrin is the winner because she is closer. Oh. The answer is, in fact, 20,000. Damn. Holy shit. 20,000. Did it grow back? Sorry, what Whoa. was that? Did the teeth grow back? Yeah, they get they have so many teeth, like an, a never ending what? supply of teeth. <laughs> which is great for sharks. They love Wait, there's gonna be a tiebreaker question and Ryan and Ryan has it, so maybe we should ask that anyway. We don't need a tiebreaker it. question. It's four I know, but to I wanna know what the question was. I wanna know what the question was. It's four to two. <laughs> yeah, but it's worth, the, the the tiebreakers were six six, six to six. It was only it was only if you had gotten that question right and maybe he would have given Ryan, you two points. Don't be coming in here thinking that you can just take <laughs> I was control just preparing. of my show. I was preparing. My game show. That is specifically designed to humiliate my good friend Jack Bearcat. It's on working. Live broadcast every week. It's working. <laughs> so, Bryn, congratulations. You win. <laughs> you are the proud owner of a 1984 Hewlett Packard printer. It does not print in color, it does not connect to the internet, and it does not know the name of your pets. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's on its way. It's on its way to you, Sabrin. Congratulations, okay. you are in fact smart. Also, than Jack. little extra surprise: look inside the ink, uh, the ink cartridge area, and you'll find yourself some pop tarts. A yes. bonus, a little yeah. bonus but, in there. Bonus Sabrin, tarts. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank, thank you for you. your uh, for your thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Your wonderful video. <laughs> um, is it? Can we release the the full thing? Because there was a lot. Yeah. We just showed the part where you got hit with the ball, but I kind of want to show the Yeah, ball you can do the whole thing. My best friend went through a lot recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have that to look forward to. Uh, on Thanks, the Sabrin. Thanks, Thank Sabrin. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. Wow. What is that? You're, you're 0 and 3 now? Oh, yeah, 0 and 3. But next week, I have a good idea. Let's get in some James Bond questions. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping hints. <laughs> the only chat. thing I know about. You were surprisingly. We just did a a stream the other uh, day, a band stream. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, and we did some trivia on there, and we did a James Bond one, and Jack was very, very good at it. He's turns learned. out that's all I know. He is a learned man when it comes to uh, espionage. She was a great. She was a great um, opponent. A great she was fantastic. opponent. Fantastic. Worthy. A worthy. Fantastic. Opponent, if you will. Worthy. It's time for fun facts, people. Jeffrey, take it away. Fun facts. Fun facts. That's a vibe right there. <laughs> That's that a new one. song. That's a new that song. It's was so good. I hope someone recorded that. That's, uh, well, we, yep. The show is oh recorded. Oh, my goodness. That was really good. Oh, my goodness. Fun facts, fun facts. Fun facts, fun facts, fun facts. Alex, I have a question for you because yes. I'm not really, like, in tune with Twitch and how it works. Yeah. Um, How come during the Are You Smarter Than Jack, everyone just puts in emojis? Uh, we have it. We have the chat set so that during uh, "Are You Smarter," people can't put the answer in the chat, so it just becomes emojis, and that way oh. they can't they can't tell you anything. Well, I will we'll be releasing my phone number um, on the, on the next week's episode because I'd like to win. So, text That's me the answers. Illegal. Do I not cheat. Earpiece. I would earpiece. It's time, Jack, we're on fun facts now. Sorry, Can we leave sorry, the sorry. past in the past and yes, let bygones sorry, sorry. be bygones and let facts yes. be facts? Okay, and let them be fun let this facts time. Be facts. Jeez. A mattress doubles its weight after 10 years of use, collecting dust and mites. Throughout its time, vermin eat tiny parts of our skin, which fall down in the mattress folds. And semen. Ah. So. And probably some other stuff, too. Sleep well tonight, folks. Sleep heavy tonight. While you're lying in your filth. Billy goats urinate on their own heads to smell more attractive to females. This is true. <laughs> This is absolutely true. I know this because my my own goats, those little whippersnappers, have Piss started on your head. <laughs> have started coming of age, if you will, and uh, discovering their their bodies. They're three boys, and we've had to have them we've had to have them neutered because uh, they were in fact going pee pee on their own faces, and we love it <laughs> so much. Just yes. giving each other golden showers. <laughs> goats 
turns out love golden showers. So. Makes, makes one of us. <laughs> if Pinocchio ever said a phrase, my nose will grow now, it would cause a par- paradox. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> this is known as <laughs> Pinocchio's paradox. Pinocchio's nose would have to grow to make his statement not a lie, but then it also can't grow, otherwise the statement would not be a lie. Ah, you know the uh, you know the the you know the the gif of the guy pointing to his head. <laughs> this is why it's fun facts because we're learning. Yeah, we're learning. That one's actually kind of a yeah. That's a good one. I like that. I'd like to know what happens. I feel like if that like that, that's the secret to unlock his little wooden chest and get the gem that lives in his heart. But the treasure is inside. Because the treasure is inside. A lion's roar can be heard from five miles away. Five miles off. Nearly 3% of the ice in Antarctic glaciers is penguin urine. <laughs> Believe Sorry. that. Don't Believe. eat the yellow snow. Because the temperature in the Antarctic is well below zero, the urine cannot evaporate and it just combines into the glaciers. F- fuck yeah. I love science. Only to become one. <laughs> uh, there's a total what the song's one- about. <laughs> yeah. There's a total of 1,710 steps to the Eiffel Tower. Hmm. Get your steps in. Lost steps. The world record for stuffing drinking straws in your mouth at once is 459. I'm going to beat it right now. Everyone stand by. (laughs) Just the rest of it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Ants leave maps for other ants when they walk. They leave a little pheromone trail behind, and it's like a little map for other friendly ants to follow, meaning they can travel the fastest route to food or their hive. The more ants that walk that route, the stronger the map. Which is a nice metaphor for life. Go as your friends do, is mm-hmm. what I always say. Go as the ants do, go as your friends do. Follow the pheromones. Follow the pheromones. I've been saying this forever, guys. Hey, go ahead and follow the pheromones. <laughs> that was the original <laughs> slogan for uh, Fruit, Fruit Loops. <laughs> follow the pheromones. They changed it later and took, took the ant away and made him a toucan. Yeah. That's not a fact. But they kept the line. <laughs> yeah. You can fire a gun in space. Modern firearm ammunition contains its own oxidizer, a chemical that triggers the explosion of gunpowder that fires a bullet. This means that the oxygen-free vacuum of space won't stop a gun from firing. That's, so. that's actually interesting, because in space, that's what, what space, will, space Force is kind of about, the show. Is it? It's slightly. It's not really about anything. Oh, the show. I, really like I thought you meant like the, the actual organization that the United States of America put into, uh, into force. You know that's what that show that show is about, by the way. I did not know that because I still yes. haven't watched it. But oh, okay. now I know. Well, Are you getting paid by Steve Carell to promote his new show, Space Force? It's not doing well. Se- Seven p.m. every Wednesday <laughs> on TBS. Uh, it's not doing well. I don't think it's on TBS. Uh, Jupiter has lost a moon. That's sad. Aww. Um, the planet's outermost moon, S two thousand three J two, was discovered by scientists in two thousand three, but hasn't been spotted since. And it's considered lost. What What do you think happened? Jeff? I think that it's. I mean, fucking hell. Are we? How do you lose a moon, guys? Uh, sir, we uh, we've lost the moon. That's no moon. That's a. Uh, that's definitely star. definitely a Death Star. <laughs> this is that's how twenty twenty ends. We yeah. get through the rest of this year. Things start to turn a corner. We feel like things are finally going to be right, and then Death Star. Test. <laughs> and that's it. That's how we go. That's how we go out, folks. Samuel L. Jackson has a clause in his film contracts that allows him to play golf during shoots whenever he wants. Nice. And Nicolas Cage first advised Johnny Depp to pursue a career in axing, act, axing, acting during the 80s. Yeah, Johnny Depp's just out chopping wood. Do you want to act? No. I should have acted. Fuck. I should have acted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so stupid. It's good. So stupid. That that's it for fun facts, folks. Fun Those facts. Those are good folks. ones. Really good, good ones. Really good informative. Okay. I'm worried about that moon. I'm not gonna lie. I'm having major, major anxieties now about a missing moon. I don't know how you lose a moon. We gotta find that moon. Find that moon. <laughs> Come on down, find that moon. Call one eight hundred find moon now. <laughs> find moon. It's too many numbers. It's just fin moon. But you, you get it. <laughs> it's too many numbers. You get it. Um it's time to take some fan mail. However, Ryan informed me this week that the fan mail was awful. 
and not worth reading live. So please, <laughs> please, for the love of God, people, send some stuff that's send worth our time. Send some hate mail to Ryan. Send that's some not what I stuff. said. It's exact. That was word for word what you said. No, you said, these I said... idiots can't, get, can't even fashion an email that I would consider reading. <laughs> Guys, I said it was all not good enough for broadcast. Mm. When, do you mean... Do you mean... <laughs> That's rude. Do you mean indecent? Like it was naughty or do you mean it, it was, was some bad? of it was naughty and some of it was just purely all time low based. And okay. Okay. Can you, there can you solo me stuff, out? Though. Can you solo me out for a minute? Can I just have a word with everyone? Guys, let's be real here. We're not doing crash test live to talk about our band all time low, who is very successful currently has a top 20 alt single, uh, and is thriving. However, we are here to learn more about you guys. So when you send us emails to info at crashtestlive.com, don't send questions about all time low. Don't send stories about being face down in the Delaware grass. Maybe send them. I'll, we'll see. We need good stuff. We want to give you guys unsolicited, unprofessional advice. Okay? Are you paying attention? Do you get it now? Do you get it now? Bring the boys back in. Actually, ass down in the Delaware grass was the perfect story. It was face down. Oh, that makes more sense. Mm. Just ass yeah. down in the grass, just sitting That's just down. Sitting. That's, That's just, just sitting, sitting in the grass. <laughs> That's a perfectly healthy and acceptable thing to do. So I was sitting um, ass down in the grass. They're like, <laughs> uh, what? Ass down in the Delaware grass. grass. Um, so we, we, didn't, we didn't pick an email to read on the episode today because we, none were compelling. But we have decided to take a moment to read about a couple's complaint filed and found in the hallowed halls of the internet. Um, this came in from a 24-year-old with a 25-year-old boyfriend mm. who supposedly sleeps in a quote-unquote nest of clothes and towels and refuses to buy a bed. The story goes, I've been dating my boyfriend for three years and I only just finally visited his apartment this week. I was amazed to see his bedroom. There is no bed. Instead, there is a huge pile of clothes and towels in the middle of the room. My boyfriend said it's his nest and he sleeps in it. He showed me how he does it and he kind of curls up into a ball in the middle of the piles and stacks some clothes and towels on top of them and falls asleep. He told me he had never had a guest in his nest, a guest in a nest, before. But I was welcome to try, or I could sleep on the sofa. It turns out the reason he had not invited me to his apartment yet was because he was embarrassed about on account of the nest. <laughs> He's embarrassed on account of the nest. Gamer thinks that she's dating a rat. Maybe. Uh, I thought it was very odd to have a nest. <laughs> yeah. But I tried to sleep in it with him. I found it very uncomfortable and weird, and I also noticed that it smelled bad. I went to sleep on the sofa. In the morning, my boyfriend con confronted me and said, why do you hate my nest? <laughs> I said, I thought it was weird, uncomfortable, and smelly. I asked, does he wash those clothes? And he said, get this, no, he doesn't, because he doesn't wear the clothes. They are just nesting materials. <laughs> just oh give it a my. minute. Just God. really give it a minute. He said, if we're going to take the next step in our relationship and move in together, I would need to accept his nest. I said, if we move in together, we're getting to bed. He said he'd rather never go to sleep if he couldn't use his nest. I said, fine. Maybe we'll get a two bedroom. He took offense to this. I told him his nest was stupid as a mud crab, which I now admit was childish. What does that mean? Yeah, stupid as a mud crab. The story came out in 1920. Yeah, is that a <laughs> saying? Is that a phrase that people say? <laughs> This is Delhi, Florida. It has to be Florida or like. I, I've never heard that phrase. Uh, we're currently not speaking. I wish to resolve this. I have a deep hatred of the nest, but a deep love for him. <laughs> what do I do? You must learn to love the nest. <laughs> what do you what do you do indeed? I, and, you know, I want to bring Ryan and Jeff back in for this because this is a conversation that I think we should all be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Jeff live now from Jack's own. Oh, bedroom. Alex, you weren't supposed to find out this way, but <laughs> Jeff's over in my place. In the same All season, right. at the same time, you're existing in the same yeah. space, which is supposed to be a impossibility. I've gone to a different timeline. Hmm. 
Is it the good one? Well, I haven't found out yet. Okay. I went right for Jack's house. <laughs> Which is what they say to do if you find yourself whisked away to another timeline. Go to Jack's. Yeah. If you ever need a safe house, guys, remember, everyone can always use my place. If it's full of pop tarts and Mountain Dew, you know you're in the wrong one. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back to the back to the topic at hand. Uh, love nest, acceptable? Yeah. Does, she, does she need to learn to Here's love what the I nest, think. or is it, or is this person a goober? So I've developed some odd sleeping habits from touring all these years in a bunk, yeah. and yeah. I sleep better in my little bunk, and I always have to have noise like a sleep machine running because of the generator of the bus. So is it possible instead of us calling this boy? freaky rat boy and dirty slob nest king and all these things that you guys are calling him maybe growing up he didn't have a bed and he couldn't afford a bed so the family just threw dirty laundry in a room wow and he slept upon it like his nest and that's just what gave him comfort so maybe yeah. we take his side and have him explain to his significant other and then we can judge him but that's here's what the I thing say. here's the, but unwashed you don't because they're nesting materials. You don't wash because your, the family wash your sheets. The family couldn't afford a washer, dryer, or soap. You is, know? Yeah, is this thanks. person you? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so oddly specific. Again, if she would just talk to me about it, we could figure this whole thing out. Ryan, Ryan is <laughs> Ryan, Ryan a is a nest next. boy. He's a nest boy. Here's Leanne OS. Uh, this, this didn't go the way I thought. Oh, exposed. <laughs> Yeah, actually, this this whole thing, the five episodes of this podcast, it's all been an intervention. We're sitting you down now in front gotcha of the Gotcha journalism. Yeah, this is, got, this is the big gotcha moment gotcha. where we say, Ryan, that nest has to go. <laughs> I kind of, dude, I kind of agree with you, man. I, like, I feel like, because I, growing up, I liked a fort. I like to build a fort. Oh, you I was know? a big forter. I like forter. to throw some blankets down on the ground and get cozy in there and just rustle around. In the Surprisingly, I was not into in that. Delaware grass. Oh, really? Oh, you weren't into uh, something? <laughs> yeah. You Is weren't there, into anyone... imagining that this, this pillow fort was a cast castle? <laughs> did you say a casket? Casket. Yeah. You didn't do that? That's the name of my new, uh, my new emo EP. This pillow fort is a casket. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's dark, man. Uh, oh, that's good. good shit. So, so what, what would be, obviously this is a hypothetical in order to teach the audience at home that we would like to take their advice and give, or take their questions and give them advice going forward. Uh, we don't know this person, but if you're going to give this, this lady some advice about what to do with her nesting boyfriend, what would it be? Because I, I think I'm with Ryan. I think uh, it, it, learn to love the nest. Maybe, you know, suggest washing of the nest maybe that's a good first step a happy cleanliness, medium cleanliness or in the nest. he sleeps at your place you sleep in your nest or bed or whatever you choose whatever there's dozens of us we have nests and that's just what happens there's okay, a lot we don't know about this relationship either so that's we need true, more, more information maybe we do a follow-up we'll find maybe the, find maybe, him, pic you know, maybe pictures of the nest gem gem jc ray says communication is key they should just talk about it and be more accepting of each other's views yeah you don't have to accept it but you should at least talk about it <laughs> you should definitely talk about it it's very one-sided. It's like either you accept the nest or it's it's nest or nothing. So, I know. I, mean, I don't. I don't love that there can't be like a friendly, like a compromise, like like Ryan suggested. I think I think yeah. it's important in a relationship to understand the other party, where they're coming Wait, from. I got and, it, uh, Alex. And also to wash and Febreze the nest frequently. <laughs> trouble I, trouble is. I have a good happy medium. Yeah. Median or medium? Medium. Medium. Me happy medium. medium. Happy you medium. put you get a mattress and put it on the floor. Next to the nest, nest adjacent. Next, to, yeah, you have you have a you know, the mattress is is the nest. He can kind of slowly learn to. I know some people with mattresses. The nest on the floor. is knowledge, and the mattress is the nest. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to bring your nest into the other into the adjacent nest. And, and here's and what I here's what I. A larger nest, if you will. I think uh, we need to reach out to this this person mm -hmm. and just get some maybe bring her in or him and say let's just get a little more backstory. I like it. Yeah. What is that picture? HP's 1475 says, why not have a king's size bed and his side have the nest and her side not? This could See, be a Jeff invention. This could be a Jeff. Next week. Yeah. Next on week. The show, Jeff put a king size a bed on the floor, put a nest on one side. There you go. Get your California king. <laughs> wow. Right, Snaps the lab back into his Everybody, existence. drop what you're doing. <laughs> Jeff, there's no stop, one back there. Jeff, stop Jeff. shooting plants with hair. And. <laughs> Let me create a little world over here. I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, uh, that. That's I think I think what we've learned 
And what, what we've decided as a group, if I may speak for the group, is that uh, our unsolicited advice would be to talk about it, come up with a general understanding, and maybe learn to nest together. You know, don't condone a lover. Don't scorn a lover for their dirty, filthy nest just because it's not your cup of tea. Twigs and shit. Learn, <laughs> learn in fact, to adopt the nest, enhance the nest for the betterment of your significant other. Yes? Is that what yes. we're agreeing upon? Is yes. That, that was well put, man. Thanks for bringing me into this. Hey. And yeah. thanks for understanding. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being a part of it. Uh, I see one more thing. Nest boy should also be open to growth. I agree with that. He he needs to he needs to. I'm not saying that the the person in question needs to just accept the nest. I think that they need to, in a healthy relationship, come together and work on a uh, solution that makes both parties happy. That's right. In the context of a nest. And maybe he was raised by birds. Twigs and, and shit. Yeah. Twigs and shit. You never know. You never know. Um, so, if you would like some terrible, unsolicited, unprofessional advice, email us at info at crashtestlive.com. We will now be introducing that segment, which is not a segment because I'm not supposed to say that uh, to future shows. I would like to check in now with a regular on this show. Let's see what Blonde Bear is up to before we go. There he is. In his all in all his glory. Taking a taking a stroll through the woods. And this is dated. Look at him go. This is dated uh, May May twentieth, two thousand and sixteen. However, I believe I Which, just forgot to reset the camera. Yeah. This is that's live. just this is in fact not, live. Yeah. You just forgot to do the time. It's a live feed. At the Look point. at that boy. And man, is he majestic. Remember Woo. blondebearlive.com is a thing. And if you want to check in with Blonde Bear, that's where that's where to go. If you can't sleep and you're worried about the boy, you know, check in, see how he's doing. Send him a message. You up? He is he indeed is. thick with two C's, though. Yes. Guys, we're getting towards the end of the show. Jack, what have we learned today? Uh, astronauts don't have anywhere to poop. Mm. Um, Mountain Dew has had 60 flavors. Mm. Over 60 flavors. It's true. Uh, Ryan is now a detective. Crime fighting Ryan. Crime fighting Ryan. <laughs> um, if you ever need some free hair, you can pick some up at your local salon. Just go down to Jeff's house, get blasted with hair. Hair blasted. And uh, Alex's goats piss on each other, so Alex had to sit them down and talk to them about why their bodies are changing and why they are growing. I had to give my goats the talk. The talk. Every father's got to do it. Or mother something every daddy must do and i know that now <laughs> every daddy must do, <laughs> daddy Jesus. Must do. <laughs> that was good that's it we learned a lot good we learned a lot we learned a lot yeah guys thank you so much for tuning in to another live taping of crash test live we will be back next week uh probably at a different time and on a different day this was just a weird holiday weekend um experiment and i think it went pretty well i have a solid buzz going and uh yeah i'm pretty drunk i i read most of the things okay so mark that one in the calendars have a great holiday weekend if you are celebrating if you're in a place that celebrates the fourth uh if not love to you love to all of you as always black lives matter arrest the cops who killed brianna taylor it's we we need this to happen uh and have an amazing weekend we love you guys very much we'll see you we love ya. Bye. Bye. Oh yeah, I guess I'm really pissing, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I guess I'm really pissing, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I guess I'm Crash test live!